born in Lila. Oh, Douglas, you broke it. <laughs> when we started cutting, these were all rusty. So the first week, the first day even, we're just wearing the rust off stuff. Not just the sickle bar. Dennis is always the first one going. Mommy's almost full too. I guess Matt's gonna go get him. Probably. All the combines are blown off. Sickle sections are fixed. And it's time to get rolling. I'm just gonna turn that down real quick. Whew. I was apparently cold last night. Turn the radio on. Ready to roll! Actually today, I think I'm gonna record every time I dump. So I'll tell you guys the time and what dump it is. Perfect. So, first dump of the day, 9.26 and I'm dumping Dennis. Dennis caught me with my tarp rolled up still. That's embarrassing. These guys cut a little different than I'm used to. They cut in a circle, so they don't go back and forth. So I'll dump Doug when he gets over to this side. I just dumped Dennis. Dump number two of the day, 9.32 with Douglas for the dump. Look at how short his auger is. It makes me nervous every single time because we have to get so close to that header and I could be closer honestly so he's not dumping on the high side. Also, he still has cab grain. So I have four combine dumps on me and I hope I have enough to load the truck. I can't really see in there. I guess we'll see, but truck dump number one of the day and it's 9.35. When we unload on trucks, the trucker is watching his gauges inside the cab and he's gonna pull forward when his gauge is good for a legal load. And then when he pulls forward, I'm gonna get on the radio and tell him to stop when he gets to the back hopper because he can't really see back here. And then they leave. So I don't have to move at all, basically. All right, he's loaded. I still have a little bit left in my cart. So we're just gonna put this auger up. Weep. And then Dennis is right there and he'll be the next dump. And then next time I'll probably dump in the bagger. Oh, it was good that I dumped on that truck then because the sooner you dump on the trucks, the sooner they can get out of here, the more truck loads you get. Blah, blah, blah. Those guys are going to the bin site. While we wait on trucks, we dump in the bag. So that's why the bag is out here and we're running trucks because when we switch fields, if the bagger doesn't make it to the field right away, then we have the trucks there most of the time. Most of the time when we move fields, the trucks are like right behind us. So, and we time it just right. So we're not waiting. There's not combines sitting very often. Bye Clint. Also, today we have the water truck out here. Well, every day we have the water truck out here, but it's supposed to get up to 100 degrees today. So it's very important that Matt is running and able to go quickly wherever we need it to because fires can happen very quickly out here when it's hot outside and the combines are all hot, hot, hot. There comes Dennis. Dump number two with Dennis. 9.43 a.m. Dump number three, 9.47 with Doug. I just dumped Dennis for number five today and Doug at number six for 9.59. Now my cart is not all the way full, but Doug's auger is shorter and closer to my right side. So I have to dump more often since I'm only unloading those two. So dump number one in the bag of for the day. We're en route, and it's 10.01. I didn't realize how bad my allergies are actually getting in town like a few minutes ago. So, since this is the last strip of this pass, Dennis is going to clean up the corners on this side, right over there, and then he's going to go down on that strip. And then Doug will probably clean up the corners on the opposite side. Dennis just dumped again stationary. 10.15. Doug is on his way up that strip. He'll probably dump again and start doing headlands on this piece. 
dump number eight with Doug. 10.20 in the morning. And Matt is dumping on the cart. I think that's his, I mean, dumping on the bag. Jeepers, I think that's his second dump of the day. So three dumps on the bagger, maybe. Dump number nine, 10.41. I can't really see it too good, but that washout would total a grain cart, probably, or close at least. Dump 11 with Dennis. Well, dump 11 total. 10.55. Cart dump number three. Bagger number two. 11 o'clock. Combine dump number 12. 11.06. Douglas! one this was already. 11, 12. That is. I think it's 14. Maybe it's 13. Dump number 13. 11, 28. Dump 14. 11, 32. And back to the bag. I think we're getting close to having a full one, so we're gonna have to change the bag out and it's getting hot outside. All right, that bag is finished and we are finishing up this little patch up here. Tristan is gonna go cut out another bag site in another field. So normally when we switch fields, we will have someone, well, we'll have a group of guys changing the bag and the trucks are here, so that's handy. But the group of guys changing the bag out is gonna move the bag to the next field. Tristan's gonna go over there first, cut a bag site out. And then the rest of the grain from this field will get carted over to the next field to get put in that bag. Or in this case, we're just going to put it in the trucks. But if the trucks weren't here, we'd be carting it to the other field at the bag site that's being cut out there. So sometimes when the bagger is in a different field or area that's not accessible, we have to leave this field through an approach back there and then we have to drive down the road and then enter the approach down there for that field that the bagger's in because the combines got into this section through a little creek crossing that the grain carts can't get through. So sometimes that complicates things. Not really a lot, like you're just gonna have to move grain around, but you can't drive super fast down the road with a loaded cart on. And I guess Doug's combine just quit, so that's not good. There's tire tracks right there. That's where the combines crossed over, but we can't go through that. Especially, so when you're crossing things like that are super grassy with equipment, you'd never know what's down in there. So you could be crossing and if you didn't test it out and like if the water washed some of it out, it could be a super deep little washout and you would never know because all that grass is just like, hey, and then you ruin the equipment. So especially the culverts around here that hide in the grass, I've learned from experience that those are very bad. So they are fixing Doug's combine, I suppose. Tristan is over in this field that we gotta go back out on the road for. I just dumped on the bag again. That's gonna be a pretty small bag because we loaded like two trucks instead of putting it in the bag, but I guess that's two trucks we don't have to take out later. So I guess we'll just have to unload that one pretty fast. I don't know actually, but apparently on Doug's combine, it just like shut off and he doesn't know what's wrong with it. I'm sure they're figuring it out, but it's a new to us combine, a 9870. And it's been running pretty good, so. Who knows? I guess we'll find out in a little bit. We smelt it when we were helping him 
get over that gate. I, I could smell it, but I thought it, somebody had just filled fuel this morning and got covered in it. Oh, I didn't smell it, no. I didn't smell it until I started walking up to it. I could smell it everywhere. But Dad didn't see it just pouring out. So apparently Doug's combine was covered in fuel, which on the hottest day of this week is not... And again, I just caught a couple whiffs of diesel fuel. I was like, oh, somebody's got it on their boots or something. It's not ideal. So uh, apparently he blew an injector line or something, I think, for the fuel, because there was fuel all over the combine, um, and the cap wasn't off, so... Well, that's what's wrong. Coming out? No. The combine's getting left where it is. We are... On to the next field. Sometimes it just takes less time to dump over the fence. Voila. Okay, we are about to shut down for the night. So we are waiting on a guy to get out here with a pickup. And we're all gonna, well, me and Jaden are gonna jump in with him and then go get vehicles for everybody else because they only need one bagger, right? I mean, one cart driver for the rest of the night, which is only like 15.